I am excited about that, man. I'm excited about March 5th. You know, every year at the beginning of the year, usually in within the first three months, we uh, just over and above our tithe and offering, we say, God, we're setting this aside. We're, we're going to bless uh, the kingdom. We're going to bless the house of God. And so on March 5th, man, we're going to be doing that. And I want to encourage you, pray now about what you can give. Uh, I want to encourage us also to be very sacrificial this year. I believe, again, that we, that we need to raise more money than we've ever raised before in one weekend. I believe that we can do that. In 2021, uh, 2020, actually, we raised about $135,000 in that weekend. In 2021, we raised about $110,000. I believe that we can break 20's record. I believe that. But for that to happen, <clears throat> for that to happen, it takes all of us doing something. And it takes all of us doing our part. How many want to be, first of all, how many want to be more generous than ever before? Yeah. Not just with your money, but I'm talking about with your time, with your talent, with your treasure, every area of your life. Listen, you and I, we, the only reason that we have anything is simply because of God. He's blessed us to be a blessing, man. And uh, there's, nothing, there's nothing greater that you could do with your life than be, uh, be a steward of what God is doing and what God wants to do. How many want to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant? How many of you want to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant? You know, that scripture, that, 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 that statement, many people think, well, they're going to hear that because they've given their life to Jesus. Well, possibly. But in reality, the only place in the Bible where it says ever, well done, thou good and faithful servant, it's all, it's all about stewardship. So if you, want to be, if you want to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant, you've got to be a good steward. Because in Scripture, that's biblically, that's the only place in the Bible where it talks about you're going to, you're going to receive his blessing. And he's going to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant, because you've been faithful with a little. Amen? So that's just a good word. That right there is just, that's, that's worth the, the, that's just worth it. You coming right there. Just that one statement. And because many of us don't, we didn't realize that. And it's very powerful when you think about it. Amen? I'm, uh, man, I'm, I'm just emotional today. I'm emotional in worship. As I'm just standing up here, I'm just like weepy-eyed. I'm like, oh, my gosh, the presence of God is awesome in this place, man. Anybody love the presence of God? Anybody love the presence of God? Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we love you. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for everything that you've done, everything that you are, Jesus. We love you. We praise your name, Jesus. In Jesus' name, Amen. I want to wish my baby uh, girl, Sari, our little, our youngest one, a happy birthday today. Where's she at? It's her birthday today. She is officially 13 years old. Wow, she's officially 13, so happy birthday, Sari. I don't want to embarrass her too much more, but she's like, stop it. Although she likes it. Um, anyway, happy birthday, baby. Love you so much. Hey, we're going to get right into the Word today, man. I'm excited about what God is going to do. Uh, man, I believe that God is on the move in a big way. Uh, is there some football games going on today? That's why all of you came to this service. That's why first service is overflowing. Like, uh, I got some football to watch. I'll tell you who I'm going for. I was going for the Bills, but they're done. They're gone. So next is I'm going to go for the 49ers. Tyler. Ron. Ron. I know Ron. Ron. It, he, Ron Bounds, he, he's a lifelong fan, and uh, Robert Roboca, man, you, I know you're a 49ers fan. He's, he sports it every week. Tyler, you actually got your, your jersey on, right? Yeah? Yes, sir, huh? And, the, and this is the reason. This is the reason. I'm not saying that there are not Christians in, on the other teams. I know there are. But I, I, really want, I really want that quarterback, Purdy. I really want him because they better sign him. They're, they're going to kick Garoppolo to the curb, and they're going to sign that dude because he's only 23, and he just kills it, man. And uh, he, so I, and he's a strong Christian. Every time he says, I step on the field, I want to glorify God. Not just, not just a God, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So anyway, uh, yeah, that's who I'm going for is the 49ers. So hopefully they win today. Go Bengals. Go Bengals. Go Bengals. That sounded... A little funny. <laughs> that Joe, Joe Bur Burrow, he's, he's good too, but um, I don't know if he's saved or a Christian. Or, but I go for the believers, man. I want Jesus to be glorified. 
Amen. All right, hey, we're going to get right into the word today. Man, I'm super uh, excited to bring this word to you. I believe that the Holy Spirit, by the way, real quick, Men on Fire, uh, we're leaving Thursday, this coming up Thursday, 9 a.m. from the church. So if you're going to Men on Fire, be here. Um, you can reach out to me about what you need. You need sleeping bag, warm clothes, a lot of snow up there in Newport, but we're going to have an amazing time. Uh, it's going to be Thursday through Saturday. Next Sunday, our men are going to be sharing testimonies. It's going to be powerful. I think we have like 25 guys going. And so we're going to have an amazing time. Be praying for the men. Safety, protection all the way to Bear Pod, Men on Fire. Uh, there's going to be, it's going to be uh, just a, a mighty move of God this Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I'm pumped up for it. Amen. Let me pray. God, thank you for today. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your presence. God, your presence is so real, so powerful, so tangible. Jesus, it's so evident. Jesus, we love you. We worship you. Holy Spirit, reveal Jesus in this place today. Help me to get out of the way and help you to be seen, Father. I want you to be seen. I want you to be felt. I want you to be experienced. Holy Spirit, we need you. This is your church. These are your people. And I pray, God, that you would use me as a vessel uh, to bring glory and honor to your mighty name. In Jesus' name, everybody say amen. amen. All right, a couple verses for you. Acts chapter 20, verse 28. This is the first verse. I'm going to read it out of the Amplified uh, our guys, we actually don't have it on the Amplified. It's going to be on the New Living Translation, but they're kind of similar. Go ahead and put that up if you could. Acts 20, 28, New Living Translation. This is what it says. Do you got that? Put that up. And uh, so this is a really, really good verse. There we go. Great verse. Acts 20, 28. So guard yourselves and God's people. Feed and shepherd God's flock, his church, purchased with his own blood, over which the Holy Spirit has appointed you as elders. So this statement right here is very powerful. This was, this was spoken by the Apostle Paul to the church of, to the Ephesian elders. Um, although it's, it's spoken to the elders of a church, of a local church, I believe it also applies to us as individuals, as Christians uh, and followers of Jesus Christ. I'm going to read this out of the Amplified also. It says, take care and be on guard for yourselves. And I want you, I want to capture that. I want to focus in on that, hone in on that right there. Take care of yourselves and be on guard. How many of you know that it is important to be on guard spiritually in this day and age? Take care and be on guard for yourselves and the whole flock. I am a pastor. I love pastoring. I am called to pastor. I love people. I am a defender of people. I am a, uh, uh, I'm a shepherd. Uh, my, my job, my responsibility is to tend and to, flee, uh, and to feed and to guide the church, the whole flock over which the Holy Spirit has appointed me as a pastor or a bishop and uh, a guardian to shepherd, to tend, to guide, to, uh, to feed the church of the Lord or of God, which he obtained for himself. He bought it by saving it, bought it and saving it for himself, the Amplified says. He bought the church, and he's saving the church for himself. That's why I'm a, I'm a defender of the church. That's why, I'm a, a, that's why I stand up for the church. There's a whole lot of believers that are up on Jesus but down on the church. You can't kiss his face and kick his body. Don't talk smack about the church. Charles Spurgeon said, woe unto the man that judges the church, man. You're, you're on dangerous territory when you kiss his face but kick his bride. Very, very dangerous. So this was spoken by Paul the Apostle to the Ephesian elders. And, uh, but what initially got me going this direction this week was I, was I was really thinking about this verse, taking care of yourself and being on guard spiritually. And so that's what I want to talk to you about. I want to talk to you about things that I try to apply in my own life to, to take care of myself. And you can take and apply these very same things, if you will, to your own life to help you take care of yourself and also to help you guard yourself so that you stay on course. You stay on mission. How many of you want to finish strong? You want to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the kingdom of heaven. Enter into the place that you've longed to be and and. That's what we want to hear. So just like you monitor your, your dashboard and just like, you know, you're on your car, it says in check engine light, low fuel level, your tire pressure is low. Listen, when, when your tire is low and, and it's like an, if, if you know about it and it's an inch from like being on the metal, you know good and well you're going to be rolling into some mini mart, right? 
And by the way, this crazy shooting that happened this last weekend in, in Yakima, Jeff Moore, where you at, Jeff? Jeff is in the sound booth. His wife, Jeff works right down the road from that mini mart. His wife kept him 10 minutes earlier that morning that that, sh that shooting broke out. And he was like, you know, I, I don't know why, you know, but uh, I was 10 minutes later. And when he drove by that mini mart, he stops at that mini mart every morning. He stops there. When he drove by, the first cop was pulling in. He would have been in that mini mart. That's the importance of praying and, and saying, God, order my steps. Order my steps, God. I don't want to be anywhere. I don't want to be anywhere that you don't want me to be. I'm telling you, man, you need to pray every day because the devil wants to take you out. You need to pray every single day. God, protect me. Keep your hand upon me everywhere I go. Order my steps, God. I don't want to be out of your will. I want to be in your perfect timing. Come on, amen? And so, you know, just... Um, it's so important that you monitor not only your vehicle, but even more important that you monitor your inward dashboard, okay? That you take care of yourself, okay? And so I want to talk to you about the necessity of spiritual maintenance. The necessity of spiritual maintenance. These are just things that I, that I try to focus on, okay? My spiritual maintenance, not only as a pastor, but as a Christian, as a son of God, as a man of God, and as a son of my father, okay? Number one, very important. You should monitor this in your own life, your appetite for God. Your appetite for God. Your appetite for God. My love for the Bible. You have to love the Bible. If, you're, if you don't love the Bible, you got issues. You got issues and you need some help. You, my love for the Bible. My love for prayer. My love for corporate worship. I love worship. Worship is my favorite thing to do. Many of you think, man, it must be preaching. No, it's not. Preaching is like way down here. Okay? It's my favorite is to worship Jesus. Because I know that that's the only thing that pleases him. It's not my preaching. Can you imagine God up in heaven saying, ooh, Brian, I've never heard that before. Can you imagine taking notes? No, he's not taking notes on what we say. He's heard it all. He said it all. He's heard it all, okay? Worship, our worship is in, it's the only thing in our service that God gets anything out of. Everything, it's, it's our worship, our worship is for him. The preaching is for you. So don't be like, well, I don't really like the worship or it's too loud. That's why we have earplugs. It'll tone it down a little bit, but we are loud. I'm, I'm sorry, you know, that we're so loud. We, we like to be loud. There's churches that are worse. There's churches that are worse, you know, as far as like noise level. I've been in them. I'm like, dang, Jesus. I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting a little bit older. Let me just say this real quick, um, that, <laughs> that uh, these, the, right outside this window, there's six spots out there. Next week, those will all be reserved for our senior classic adults, okay? We call them our classics, okay? Our senior, because I, I don't want our seniors having to walk from the field, Okay? So all of those, there's going to be signs on those. So if you see a young buck parked in there, go ahead. You have my permission. Just get a, get a good, you know, bumper, you know, and just back it up. Push them out of the way. I'm just joking. <laughs> if you see, or if you see, you know, someone in their 20s, like, trying to park up there, just pull up and say, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. You got to get out. That's my spot. No. All right. Oh, help me, Jesus. I think I'm already hungry. Um, <laughs> worship, man. I, I got off on a rabbit trail. <laughs> there it is. Kill that rabbit. I want my worship, talking about my appetite for God, I want my worship to remain fresh. I want my, my I'm, this morning, I'm just weepy. I tell my wife, I'm like, oh, my gosh, I'm just, I can't stop crying today in worship. It's just so the powerful presence of God. I want my worship to remain fresh. I want my worship to remain intimate. I want my worship to be exciting to, to God. Amen? Amen? So when my devotion, me personally, when my devotional life becomes a duty and not a delight, that's when it's time to shut everything down. Shut your phone off. Shut it all down until, until his presence returns. That's when it's time to just say, you know what, I need to take a break. 
Because I, I, it's easy, it's easy, when you're a pastor and, and you do this for a living, it's easy to become a, a full-time, uh, like, it, it's very easy to become someone that is a, 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 a full-time, like, professional in what you do, and you lose your sense of awe of God. And I don't ever want to be a, I don't ever want to be a, like in a full-time role, but a, a, a part-time lifestyle. You know, you know what I'm talking about? I want to always have, I want to I always honor God. I want to truly always honor God. I want my appetite. And I pray that if your appetite needs to change, if you've been living spiritually off junk food, I'm praying that your appetite begins to change, okay? That, you, that God would give you and I an insatiable hunger for his word and his presence and his power, okay? Come on, amen? amen. Number two, this is another thing that I think it's, that I monitor personally in my own life, and I would encourage you to think about monitoring in your own life, is my suspicion of others. I don't want to, like Saul, I don't want to eye David as his, uh, Saul eyed David as his biggest competitor, okay? And I want to celebrate the success of others. I am very, this is important to me as a pastor, I want to celebrate the success of others. If God is blessing somebody else, Thank you, God. I want to celebrate their success. I want to, I want to cheer them on. I have always been, I've always been a pastor that has made room for others. It is not about me. It is not about I. It is not about me having to preach. I have always made room for others. And I will always, t- always till the day I die, do my best by the grace of God to make room for others. Amen? And I want to celebrate the success of others and not, listen, here. Hear me on this. And not constantly examine their motives related to me. Not constantly examine their motives related to me. It is so important. Okay? You just need to chill a little bit. If you're just constantly examining the motives of others towards you, you think everybody's out to get you, you're not that important. You need to chill. You need to bring it down. Come on, somebody. You need to bring it down just a little bit. Not only do I try to monitor my suspicion of others, but I want also to make sure that I'm not being suspicious of God. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. If you're suspicious of God's intentions in your life, not only will you struggle to trust him during the good times, but you will literally find it nearly, not not only will you... uh, Will you struggle trying to trust him in the hard times, but you will find it nearly impossible to trust him in the good times. Because this, and I know this, by experience, you will squander an entire, your entire season of peace and favor worrying about the stormy weather, stormy weather or the trial that you are sure to soon encounter. Okay? In other words, being suspicious of God means believing that his blessings are too good to be true, and they are on the verge of slipping away at any moment. And oftentimes, we start thinking this way because we don't have a biblical mindset, and we begin to think the way that the world thinks. We think that the way we think the world the, the way that the world thinks, and we don't have a biblical mindset. And it is so important to have a biblical world view. Do you know that that? There's studies out right now that are saying that pastors, senior pastors, 40% of senior pastors do not have a biblical worldview. And they're in ministry and they're preaching and they're, and they're teaching. God help us. I'm telling you, the church, the, the big church, the big C church needs some serious help. We are in need of serious revival. We are in need of, uh, of CPR. CPR stands for Christ Prevailing Revival. We need the Holy Ghost to breathe on us like never before. Can I tell you, man, the Holy Spirit and having the Holy Spirit in charge and it is so important. It's so important. It's his church. It is so important. Amen? When you begin to think like the world, you begin to think like, you begin, you begin to use terms like karma versus Christianity. And I even hear a lot of Christians talking that smack on, on Facebook. I'm like, you need to get it straight. Come on. You're tripping. You're tripping. Like karma, see, there's a big difference between karma and Christianity. Karma is when you get what you deserve. Christianity is Jesus got what you deserved. Are you hearing me? And so you need to learn today to stop squandering your season of blessing by living in a state of suspicion of God and the way that God works in your life, okay? 
John the Baptist was an individual that was suspicious of God, of, of Jesus, and wanted to, he sent his disciples and said, hey, I want to really know. If I'm going to lose my head for this guy, I want to really know, is he, the, is he the way, is he the truth, is he the life? Am I, is he the, really the one, or am I, am I just dying to die, you know? He, he, he was one that, um, that, that went through that. Amen? Come on. So let me just tell you this. Enjoy the favor of God. Enjoy the favor of God in all of its fullness and trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Not just in the, in the bad times, but also in the good times. So don't be suspicious of others. Don't think that people are just always out to get you. Or people, they didn't say hi to me today. There's 400 people to say hi to every week, 500, 600. There, you know how many people I have to say hi to every week? Pastor didn't come on my side of the building. Sorry. <laughs> Stop tripping, boo. I'll come on your side next week. What about you? Are you friendly? You want everybody to come shake your hand, but you don't shake nobody's hand. You want everybody to introduce themselves to you, but you aren't willing to get uncomfortable and introduce yourself to anybody else. Very important. It's a two-way street, baby. It goes both ways. Amen. Okay. Number three, here we go. This is another inward dashboard that I monitor in my own life. My love for this girl. My love for this girl right here. My love for my spouse, okay? I want to be so overwhelmed with her beauty, her character, her, pat, her personality. Listen, that sexual temptation seems idiotic. That sexual temptation seems idiotic. There's a whole lot of Jezebels. I'm anointed, and I know I'm anointed. And there is a whole lot of Jezebels out there on Facebook and on Instagram and on uh, whoever else and, and workplaces, and, uh, you know, they're crazy. They're crazy, and they're coming, right? And I want to make sure that I am so in love with her, okay, that she's my everything, okay, that she's my everything. So if you're married then you, you better, that's, where, that's where the, side of the, the side that you want to be on. You're married, you're going through issues, you better get some help before, before you end up messing your life up. Amen. My love for my spouse. Uh, Revelation chapter 3 is very powerful. When you've lost your first love, okay, talking about your, or your love for God. When you've lost your first love for God, the Bible says three things. Remember, repent, and repeat. Remember, repent. And repeat. Can I just tell you that applies even in your own your own life spiritually, your relationships. Remember, repent, and repeat. Do what you did in the beginning. Okay, that's why we almost twenty nine years later in April will be married. But that's why we we love to be around each other. We like to be around each other. We. We, we like to go on vacation. We like to date each other. We like to eat together. We like to laugh together, okay? We like each other. I'm going to get her, we're going to go fishing this year. But she, she likes to fish. I don't know, she, 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 she likes to fish and she does good fishing. And, uh, but I'm going to outfish her this year. Just kind of like my brother back there in the corner, man. Come on, you know, your wife can catch better fish than you, bigger fish than you. I've seen the pictures. Come on. <laughs> Come on, man. Uh, here's another one. This is, this is, this is what I, I do. I, I, I want to monitor in my life, my motivation for life, my motivation for life. I want my, I want my inner dialogue to be positive, to be hopeful, and to be joyful. Okay, I want, because I, I talk to myself. If you don't talk to yourself, you're crazy. You got to talk to yourself. I want my inner dialogue to be positive, hopeful, and joyful. I want to look forward to each day when my feet hit the floor, I want to look forward to that day. And when it's sunny, it does make a big difference. Thank you, Lord. All of you that don't like the sun, that's weird. Hallelujah. As part of God's grand plan. Okay? I don't, hear, hear me on this. I don't want others to have to motivate me. I don't want others to have to be my cheerleader all the time. 
You've been serving Jesus for 10 years. It's time to buck up. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Get off the pacifier. I want to be self-motivated out of passion. Inner dialogue to be healthy. Inner dialogue to be positive. Inner dialogue to be joyful, okay? You cannot have a positive life with a negative mind. You truly have to deal with your BS, your belief systems. You, you truly have to deal with your belief systems because Christianity, it's not, a, it's, not, it's not a matter of behaving right. It's a matter of believing right. It's a matter of believing right. God, help me because our minds get jacked up. In this crazy world, your mind can get tore up from the floor up, and, and you, can, you can start believing some whacked out stuff, some crazy stuff. That's why you need to make sure that you're reading the Bible. Come on, amen. My motivation for life. Listen, my competition and your competition is not other people. Do you know what? You, let me tell you what your competition is. It's your procrastination. Your competition is your unhealthy diet. Your competition is your ego. Your competition is your resistance to wisdom. You lack wisdom, ask of God. He'll give it to you freely. But you've got to ask for it. He's not just going to dish it out. You've got to ask for it. And then not only do you ask for it, you've got to read Proverbs. You've got to read the book. Okay? Come on. Your competition is not other people. Your competition is your enjoyment of drama. It's your enjo enjoyment of drama. Okay? My motivation for life is so important. My love for my spouse, my motivation for life. Here is another one that, that, I, that I monitor and I, I do my best to monitor. My fear about anything. My fear about anything. I want to say like the Apostle Paul in Acts 20, 24, he said, none of these things move me. None of these things move me. I want no health scare. I want to take care of myself, but I want no health scare. I want no aging scare. Come on, somebody. I want no nuclear scare. I want no terrorism scare or any scare whatsoever, okay? Any scare whatsoever to knock, to knock me off my, off my feet. I want a healthy fear of the Lord. I want to honor him, and I want to have a healthy fear of the Lord. Does that mean I'm afraid of God? No. It means that I don't want to dishonor him. I don't want to bring, I don't want to bring a, I don't want to put a, uh, uh, I don't want a black, uh, uh, like attach a black eye to the name of Jesus. Amen? Come on, amen? I want to please him, and I want to honor him. Number six, here we are. We're going through nine of these. My, my margin about money. My margin about money. This is something that we need to monitor. You should monitor. You should want to monitor because money is one of those things that we, we don't necessarily like to talk about. Um, but everyone's concerned about it. Everybody's concerned about it. Okay? I want to live below my means and I want to save on every small purchase to have money for major purchases. Amen? By the way, thank God that Breakthrough Church is in a position that when, when, when we... I told you guys two years ago, I said God spoke to us about, about saving, saving, saving. Pay this thing off so that we can save, 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 so that when the time hits, we're going to be in a position to seize the moment and to pay cash for things. Last week, we paid cash for that lot across the street. So thank God for that. Thank God, that, thank God for that, that we were in a position just to write the check and say, hey, that's ours now. And so thank God. And I want, to I want to encourage you this week, we have some, just some different things that we just want to see God answer. Be in prayer this week. This is a big week, okay, in, in moving forward in our building. Be in prayer this week for God's favor. We only want God's, God's will. We only want the center of God's will, okay? We don't want to be out of God's will. We don't want to get ahead of him. We don't want to be way far behind him. We want to be right smack dab in the middle of God's will. Our margin about money. I want to make things last longer and live by cash, not by credit. Okay? Come on. Wherever your money goes will prove where your heart is at. Some of you, you are very, very generous, and some of you are not quite as generous as you used to be. And that, that's alarming in the church. Do you know that 2% of the church, 2% of Christians actually tithe? 
That's a stat. That's proof. 2%. And it is crazy. It is crazy. But you as a Christian, that should provoke you and that should, that should challenge you. That should make you go, man, I need to do something. I need to do something. Okay? I need to honor the Lord more. Can I just tell you, I was talking with, I was talking with Eric. Where's Eric? Eric? I was talking with Eric Lance. We were talking before service and he was saying, he, he was just talking about how before he started tithing, he used to think he couldn't afford to tithe, and, and, and he had this mindset, and that's exactly what it is. I can't because I can't. If I do, then I'm going to get behind. And so he just said, you know what? Enough is enough. I have to begin to honor God. Begin to honor God. A few years ago, everything changed. Everything shifted. Now they honor the Lord. Now they, now they tithe off of what they act. Their tithe is their tithe, not their tip. And it's so awesome. He said, now, he said, we, we, we're more blessed than ever. And I make just a little bit more, but we're, we're more blessed than ever. Can I just, I don't understand the way it works, but it's a kingdom principle that when you honor the Lord, God will take care of you. When you honor the Lord, God will take care of you. So our margin about money, okay, money, money, many of you, you love money. You love money. It's all about the, the Benjamins, right? You love it. And, and you're gonna, it's going to mess you up. Money is a wonderful servant, but it is a terrible master. You need to see it as a servant. Amen? I'm done with that point. Y'all happy? Woo, praise the Lord, right? People get funny when you talk about money. And, and, uh, and it's because, I understand, it's because there's been a lot of abuse in churches in regards to money. A lot of abuse. I'm going to tell you, that's why I'm very transparent at Breakthrough about where money goes and what comes in, where it goes. Very transparent, okay? That, that's important to me to be transparent. You need to know where your money goes. We don't just say, hey, we're taking it in, and then you don't know where it goes, okay? Just so you know. Just so you know. It's very important. Somebody said, got it. Go ahead. You said you was going to move on. I don't know who that was, but somebody uncomfortable. Just joking, just messing. Oh, love it. Oh, good. See, that's that's part of that old age, you know, kicking in. I'm struggling here in a little bit. Bill Davis said, "Hey, shut up, boy." All right, here's here's another one that I need to monitor, that I do monitor, and you need to monitor. My accountability about temptation. My accountability about temptation. I want to be honest and transparent. To someone. Say someone. Very important. I have no secrets. As a pastor, I have no secrets, no hidden sins, no inward compromise. I'm the same man right here as I am down there, as I am on Monday morning, as I am on Saturday evening. I'm the same. I do my best to be the same. I'm not saying that I'm perfect. I'm far from it. But I'm striving for, for perfection. I'm striving to honor Jesus, and you can strive to honor Jesus, and you can live sin free, and you, it's not God's will for us to sin. When I used to live in compromise years ago in, in areas of my life, I would say things like, you know, well, we're all sinners just saved by the grace of God. Praise God, yeah. But that was only to comfort myself. I'm a saint of God by the grace of Jesus. I'm a son of God by the grace of God. And if you give your life to Jesus, you become a son, and he's your savior, and, and he eventually becomes the Lord of your life where he is everything to you, you'll be able to say the same thing. Amen? My, my accountability about temptation, so important. No lone ranger lifestyle. Integrity is whole. How many think integrity is important? Integrity is wholeness. The word integrity comes from integral. I integral, it is a whole number. Integrity is wholeness. What safeguards, very important, I'm going to be talking to men on fire about this this weekend. What safeguards have you placed in your life to guard against sexual temptation? Here are my five, okay? Here are my five. Number one, if you're being tempted, you need to confess it to God because he already knows your struggle and he wants to help you with it. He wants you to talk with you. Talk with, he wants to talk with you and he wants to help you with it. Listen, you can fool a pastor, but you can't fool the master. You need to confess it to God. Number two, you need to confess it to the right people. You need to confess it to the right people. You can't trust everybody. You've got to confess it to the right people, okay? 
Not everybody has earned the right to see you're ugly. Not everyone has earned the right to see you're ugly. You always confess up, never confess down. If you're here in your relationship with God and you go and you start confessing to a new believer who's struggling with the very same weaknesses that you're struggling with, you don't go down. You confess up to somebody that's already overcome it. Very important. Very important. Number three, confess it to the right people, someone you trust. Not everyone has a, 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 the right to see your, ug your ugly, okay, your, your drum, okay? And we all have areas that we are not that proud of, that we would, that we would uh, not, we don't want on the headlines. The Yakima Herald, right? They'd gladly put it on there for you. Hallelujah, right? Here's another one. Remove the triggers. My prayer personally is, Lord, please don't let me go back to anything that I had to pray my way out of. Are you hearing me? Don't let me ever go back to anything that I had to pray my way out of. I was an alcoholic for many, many years, but I got saved and delivered. I got delivered at the age of 19 years of age. Jesus set me free, instantly delivered me, and that was almost 30 years ago. And I'm not, I'm not one of those like a, a dog returning to his vomit, K, and going back and secretly, you know, doing this, K. No, Jesus set me free. He delivered me. I encountered him in such a way, such a powerful way, that it forever changed my life. And I'm not going back, K. And the key to not going back to alcohol, if, 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 you've, if you're trying to get free from it, is pour it down the drain. Amen. Pour it down the toilet. Tell the devil to hell with you, devil, as you're pouring it down. Do that once or twice, and you'll get sick of paying for that stuff. It goes for the same chewing tobacco. I did that for a long time. That was the hardest habit for me to quit, man. And I would get a can of Kodiak and nobody around. I'm in my car. It's summertime. Windows are down. I'm landscaper way back in high school. I'm like a big old chew in my lip. Want to be cowboy, city slicker. You know, I'm driving down the highway. God's convicted me. I get convicted. I throw it out the window. You know what? How many times I did that? About five times. And then I got sick and tired of buying that chew that I could barely afford anyway. <laughs> Somebody's like, that's me, brother. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Talking right to me. Hallelujah. <laughs> ah, hallelujah. Listen, uh, let that be your prayer. God, don't let me go back to anything that I had to pray my way out of. Amen? You got to recognize that sin attracts demons like blood attracts sharks. You got to recognize that sin attracts demons like blood attracts sharks. You got to recognize it. Well, can a, can, can a Christian have a demon? Can, are you dealing with major sin and you have habitual sin going on in your life? Yeah, guess what? Yeah, you can have a demon. You can have, a, you can have whatever you want. <laughs> Come on. Right? You are only as strong as you are honest. You are only as strong as you are honest. You will always pay a high price for a low life. You will always pay a high price for a low life. Come on, somebody. Get the help necessary, okay? Getting free will cost you something. Not getting free will cost you everything. Many of you men, you're struggling with porn. Many of you ladies possibly are even struggling with porn. With porn. I read a stat recently. I think it's like 15% of Christian ladies struggle with it. And the percentage of men is like probably 80, 85. It's crazy. In the church, out of the church, it don't matter. In the church, out of the church. You have to get the help necessary. Getting free will cost you something. Not getting free will cost you everything. You're only as strong as you are honest. You will pay a high, high price for living a low life. Yes, you will. Here's the last one on that, in this section, okay? Let God heal your wounds. Let God heal your wounds. Band-aids might work for a couple of days. But the best thing that you can do is to get that wound, to get that that scar, to get that cut, to get that hurt, to get that unforgiveness, to get whatever it is visible to the light and to the air if you really want it to heal. If you really want it to heal. Listen, and if you don't heal what hurt you, you will bleed on people that did not cut you. And it is so important that you allow God to heal the wounds. Some of you, thank God, you're finally in the process of allowing God to heal you from church hurt and drama and stuff, okay? And, and you you're, you're, have woken up to the fact and the reality. And th this church is full of them. 
Because uh, people from all walks of life are coming in and, and they're just hurt. There's their stuff. Okay, God wants to heal you. God wants to help you. And it's so important that you get the help that he wants to give you. Come on, amen? amen. Let me say this in regards, to, uh, in regards to your hurts, okay? We all have some type of hurt, habit, hang up, okay? If you tend to carve your hurts and injuries into marble, then it's virtually impossible to erase them. But if you're already, hear me on this, if you are already entering into 2023 with the tattoos of last year's hurts on your soul, then this is for you. If you, hear, hear this, this is so important. If you can learn to write the injuries that you have went through in the dust, then they'll be gone by the morning. You can learn to write them on the sand, then the, the fresh waters of God's presence will come and they'll be gone by the morning. So this is an important lesson to learn. I've learned this, I'm learning it, and, and until the day I die, I'll, I'll still be learning it because we're all in this process. Keep, keep your marble for engraving your benefits and blessings where they can, they can be a permanent reminder of, of how fortunate you are, okay? Dust is for injuries and marble is for benefits, okay? Very important. Change where you write your life experiences this year. If, if you have hurt, if you have stuff just that you just can't seem to get over, begin to change mentally where you write those down. Don't engrave them on marble, but engrave them in the dust or in the sand and say, God, heal me. God, wash over me. God, cleanse me. God, not only forgive me, but I forgive all those that have sinned against me. Lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from evil, okay? Christians deal with evil, and it's not just from the enemy. It's from within many times. Our worst enemy is within us many times. Come on, amen? One of our last ones is my focus on the next generation. I don't want to use up my influence on myself. I don't want to use up my influence on myself. Instead, I want to focus it on the needs, on the hurts, and on the deficiencies of God's leaders coming right after me. I don't want to waste all of my, I don't want to use up all of my influence on myself. Number nine, last one. My obsession about anything. My obsession about anything. I don't want hobbies or habits to control me. I don't want anything in my life taking the place of Jesus. Jesus Christ is my everything. Jesus is my everything. My family is precious to me. My family is worth fighting for. No sin is that valuable. No sin is that valuable. I'm gonna go back to my hobbies or my habits. I like hunting, I'm an outdoorsman, I like hunting. I used to say I love hunting. I don't love hunting anymore. I like hunting. I love Jesus. Hunting is not more important than, than Jesus. I like hunting. I like fishing. I like camping. I like the great outdoors. I like guns. I like shooting guns. I'm a man's man. I'm not a sissy. However, I really love Jesus. And I will not be obsessed, my calendar will not be obsessed with hobbit, uh, hobbits, <laughs> with hobbits or habits or anything else. <laughs> you think that's funny? You should get up here. You get up here every single week. I guarantee you'll be like, blah, 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 blah. we'll be having to interpret the tongue every week. You get up here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm almost done. Let's all stand. Just to let you know this plane is landing, man. Let's, let's all stand. Oh, man, Jesus. My, oh, God. You need to say over yourself, material things can't eat all my time away. My, my resources away, uh, the influence that I want to have in my life, none of that's going to happen, okay? I want to I read this scripture again, Acts 20, 24. I'm reading it out of the Amplified 
And it's so beautiful. It's powerful. But none of these things move me. Neither do I esteem my life dear to myself. If only I may finish my course with joy and the ministry which I've obtained from, which was entrusted to me by the Lord Jesus, who faithfully attested to the good news, the gospel of, of God's grace, his unmerited favor, his spiritual blessing, and his mercy. So, monitoring my life, the necessity of spiritual maintenance. I'm telling you, you, you'll look back on a message like this and you'll be like, man, what was that again? What was that again? And I'm telling you, it's so important that you monitor your own life, that you check yourself before you wreck yourself, right? It is so important to check my heart. It is important to monitor it daily, okay? Hear me on this. You usually don't backslide overnight. Usually it's a co over, the, over a course of time. And if you ain't going towards Jesus, you're backsliding. Well, brother, that's taking it a little far. Well, come on now with your bad self, right? Is it really? If you're not going towards Jesus, then you're moving in the opposite direction. Don't defer your inward maintenance. Don't defer your in, in, inward maintenance. You can't unsin, however, you can repent. You can repent, and you can run strong, you can run well, and you can finish strong in Jesus' name. Do you believe that today? I said, Do you believe that today? Do you really, really believe that today? So, what I want to do is, I want to pray a prayer. This is a prayer that we're going to pray out loud. We're going to pray it proudly, out loud, and we're going to confess because I believe that there's incredible power when we confess, when we just, it's just like blind Bart, okay? What do you want me to do for you? I want to see. He announced his faith goal, okay? I believe it's so powerful when we announce to ourselves so that we, say, we hear ourselves say it. Faith is built. We let the devil know. We put the demons on notice. We put our flesh on notice. We say, God, I'm yours. I'm all yours. So I want, us, I want us to pray this prayer. I'm, I'm going to ask you to pray it out loud with me together right now. In Jesus' name. Are you ready? Yes. Say, rise up. Rise up. Say, I am, I am strong in the Lord. I am mighty, I am mighty. In, his in his power. In Christ. In Christ. I, am I am strong enough to resist the forces of darkness. And in him, I am strong enough to admit when I get it wrong. I'm going to fight against the sin that strips me of, of my spiritual strength. Tell the devil, don't mess with him. Don't mess with me. It's my heavenly father is with me. You can't have my marriage. You can't have my kids. You can't have my finances, my future, or my faith. I will never surrender. I will never retreat. I will not abandon my post. I have someone to protect. I have a kingdom to advance. I have a battle to win. I will stand my ground with Christ. Come on, say, with Christ. I am victorious in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody, in the name of Jesus. The name of that is above every name. The name that is above every name. Lord, we honor you. Jesus, we honor you. Jesus, we honor you. Jesus, we honor you. Jesus, we praise your name. Jesus, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your goodness. God, it's your grace that it, it, it enables any of us to do what you've called us to do. And God, we need your grace. We need your power. We need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit like never before in our lives, in our hearts, in our families, in our marriages. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I want to take it a step further. If you need to do business with God, you need to hit this altar. If any of the things that I talked about, you were like, boom, that's me. I need to fix that area of my life. I need to get that area of my life. We're not going to have the prayer team come forward. This is between you and Jesus. You and Jesus here today. You need to hit that altar right here. I love altars and altar calls because altar calls alter lives. 
will never do without the altar at Breakthrough Church. Altar calls altar lives. Every altar call I've responded to, my heart has been changed. My life has been changed. Thank you, sweetie. Come on, keep coming. Come. I know there's more than one. Holy Spirit is here in this room right now. And if you know beyond a shadow of a doubt, man, I need to give my life to Jesus. I need to surrender to Jesus. I want to give him my all. I want to say yes to him. I need him like never before. We want to take just four or five minutes and we just want to, we want to just make that time, make that room for him to do what he wants to do in your life. Come on, just come. Come on, let's worship for a moment. God, thank you for your presence, God. Thank you for your presence. God, be glorified in this place. Jesus, we love you. We praise your name, Jesus. We love you and we praise your name, Jesus. We put our lives in your hands. We put our lives in your hands and God, we want to be in the center of your will for our lives. And God, we repent of sin. God, we repent of sin. Would you forgive us as we forgive our debtors? And would you deliver us from evil? And would you deliver us from temptation? Would you lead us not into temptation? We recognize that we need you like never before. We can't do it on our own and we don't even want to try. We're sick of trying, God, therefore we come to you. And God, we ask for forgive, forgiveness and we ask for cleansing. Let the water and the presence and power of the Holy Spirit wash over us, making us white as snow, cleansing us from all sin and unrighteousness. Lord, that you, Jesus, would forgive. You would set us free. Not only, and not only set us free, but you would save us in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, if you are in pain this morning, I want you just to lift up your hands like this. You have pain in your body, in some area of your body. See some hands all over this place. I'm going to pray right now that that pain in your body leaves. I pray right now in Jesus' name. You are the healing Jesus. The same yesterday, today, and forever. And every pain in these bodies, I command to leave now in Jesus' name. I command to leave now in the name of Jesus. Touching shoulders, touching tooth infections. God, that pain in, in touching somebody's knees. God, touching people's bodies. Father, arthritis, drive it out. Drive it out. Somebody's neck is out, tweaked in Jesus' name. Lord, let that, just, let that alignment just come back today. Let that alignment come back today right now in Jesus' name. The power of the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit. Touch every heart. Every heart. Every heart. Every heart. Every, heart, every life in Jesus' name. You receive it today? You receive it today. Come on, let's give the Lord Jesus a shout of praise. Come on, let's give him a shout of praise. Father, we love you. We love you. We love you, Jesus. Man, don't you love him? Don't you love him? Hey, tonight, 630, it's going to be awesome. This is open to the community, so this place is probably going to be full. Uh, it's going to be an awesome night of prayer and worship, and, and we're going to pray for people to be set free. It's going to be an amazing night. I want to say this, please make sure and stop by the Welcome Center. Your uh, contributions are out there from 2022. I do want to say as your pastor, thank you for supporting your church in 2022. It was our best year, and uh, we believe that even 23 is even going to be a greater year and a better year. Those are out there. They're available. God bless you. Hey, also, uh, as you're exiting, I know it gets chaotic. We're getting out a little bit earlier this week, but last couple weeks have been really crazy getting in and out. Uh, the driveway is not as it's not as wide as it should be. Just be careful going out, and uh, just be careful. God bless you guys. Hopefully, we'll see you back tonight. We love you guys so much.